I have genuinely not been this excited to review a product in months. Let's get started. So I'm just gonna get right to the point. Today we are going to be doing a first impression and review on the brand new Bite Beauty face products. I got them right here. I literally just received them in the mail like two minutes ago. I put on these hoops and I'm sitting in front of the camera because I need to try these right now. I would say this is a pretty exciting launch because this is the very first non lip product that Bite has ever released. So it's super interesting and I'm very intrigued to see how these are going to perform considering Bite has probably some of my favorite lip products on the market. So with me right now, I have the Changemaker Supercharge Micellar Foundation. I have the Changemaker Skin Optimizing Primer and I also have the Changemaker Flexible Coverage Pressed Powder here. We're gonna be putting this all on my face. I'm gonna be giving you guys my first impression and I will also be giving you guys a check-in throughout the day so we're actually gonna see how this product wears and performs. I'm gonna be filming a couple videos today. I'm gonna to be under these bright lights. I'm probably gonna be sweating. I'm gonna be running around and doing things. So we're definitely gonna be putting these products to the test today. I would love if you guys can give me your opinions down in the comments. Are you gonna be trying this foundation? Have you tried it already? If you have, give me your thoughts. And if you also have tried it, let me know what your skin type is so that people going through the comments can get little mini reviews as they're scrolling. Okay, without further ado, I'm gonna zoom you guys in and let's get started. So I currently have have nothing on my face right now however I did do my brows it's really the only thing that I have and I have skincare on from like a couple hours ago okay so let's first start off with the primer but first let's get into what the primer is actually all about so this is the primer right over here first of all the packaging for these products are really quite pretty it's a cream box with kind of like this rose gold foiled lettering it's really chic and nice I like it a lot so this is what the primer looks like it's pretty simple it comes in a little squeezy tube there's one fluid ounce of product and it retails for $50 Canadian which is definitely pricey especially for a primer I also want to note that all of these products are considered to be clean at Sephora they're vegan and they're also uh, cruelty free so if that's something that you're into or interested in or if that's something that you look for in a product that checks the box for this. So there are two different versions of this primer. There's one for normal to dry and normal to oily skin. I got the one that's for normal to dry since I do have a drier skin type. So the normal to dry primer is supposed to hydrate where the normal to oily is supposed to mattify. In the hydrating primer, there's hyaluronic acid, olive oil, and maki berry, which is an antioxidant rich ingredient that helps nurture your complexions. From what I'm reading, it does say that it's supposed to grip your foundation and allow your foundation to last longer on your skin, so we are going to test that today. Normally for me, day to day, I just use a moisturizer for my primer. I never really use like a dedicated primer. Sometimes I do, but it's not really like a staple in my routine. So I'm gonna just take about that much and just massage this into my face. So this feels pretty much exactly like a moisturizer and it's pretty lightweight. It's not a super thick formula. Okay, so now moving on to the foundation, which is what I'm the most excited about. So I did buy two foundations because I wasn't really sure what my shade would be. I got the shade L40 and L30. This is such a teeny tiny little foundation. It's so cute. Um, there is one fluid ounce in here, which is typical though for a foundation. So you're not getting less product, but the actual packaging is really nice and compact, which I actually like. It's also $52 Canadian. So this is described as a clean, long-wearing foundation with gentle micellar technology that mimics skin texture for a natural, flawless finish. The coverage is medium, the finish is natural. Also very interesting, it does say that it is suited for all skin types. It also notes that this product is long-wearing and buildable. So it is also a squeezy tube. So this is L30, which I feel like is gonna be good. Ooh, yeah, that matches me kind of perfectly. It blends into my skin almost perfectly. And then we have L40, which is going to be obviously a little bit darker. I did choose the shades that had more of a neutral undertone. Yeah, L40 will match me when I am a little bit more tan, so I am happy that I got it, but L30 right now is my perfect shade. Okay, so to apply, I'm going to use a sponge on one half of my face, and then I'm gonna use a brush on the other half of my face. Let's do the sponge first. So I'm just taking a little bit on the back of my hand. It's a really nice texture. It's not watery, but it's not too thick. It's just really nice and creamy. So I'm just picking up some on my little Real Technique sponge, and I'm gonna just dot it and then start to blend it. Oh my God, these hoops are gonna get real annoying. 
So I'm gonna just apply a super thin layer all over my face, as you guys were able to see, and then I will build it up in the areas where I feel like I want more coverage, but so far, I'm really, really liking the way that's looking. It's looking exactly how I would want. It looks very, very natural. Like, when I look really close, it really doesn't even look like I'm wearing foundation, like I don't see the product sitting on my skin. And it gave me a nice kind of light medium coverage on that first application. So, so far so good. And now I'm gonna go in with my foundation brush and let's see if that makes a difference in the application. So both sides honestly look very similar to me, um, but if I'm being really picky, I actually do prefer the side with the sponge, so I will continue the application that way. I just feel like on the side with the sponge, the blend of the foundation looks a little bit more seamless. I don't know if it's the particular brush that I use, but I feel like this just is doing the trick for me today. All right, so here is one thin layer of the foundation all over my face. Um, I do feel like it gave me probably about a light to medium coverage. You do still see a little bit of my redness through on my cheeks, on my chin, a little bit on my nose. Like my face is a completely blanked out, which is actually fine for me. Like I would totally leave it at this for, for day to day, but I think for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna try and build it up in certain areas because it does specifically mention that the formula is buildable. So let's test that out. So I'm just taking a little bit more product on the back of my hand. I'm gonna take the sponge again, and I'm just gonna dot it on my cheeks and on my chin because I feel like I can use a bit more coverage there. And let's just see if I can build it up. So it does seem like the formula is definitely buildable. It did cover up that redness on my cheeks pretty nicely and evenly. And I feel like now that I have kind of like a layer and a half on my skin, uh, my skin is looking really, really nicely perfected, but still not heavy. So as far as the way that it feels on my face, it feels really nice and lightweight. It doesn't feel heavy at all. Um, it also doesn't feel sticky. It really doesn't feel like a foundation that I'm going to have to set down with powder, which is awesome because as somebody with dry skin, as you guys know, I like to avoid powder as much as possible. Um, and this doesn't feel like it's going to slip and slide on my face. Like it already kind of feels like it's set down. So, so far so good. It's really looking exactly how I expected it to look, especially based on the way it was described. And the best way to describe it is that it just looks really nice and healthy on my skin. It has a nice little glow, but it's not overly glowy. It's not overly matte. It's just that perfect natural finish. Okay, just to quickly do the concealer for my concealer today, I'm going to just take my Dose Moran Vibrancy. I'm just going to apply a little bit underneath my eyes. I know a lot of people were kind of concerned with the fragrance that was in here, especially considering this is a clean product and a lot of people are sensitive to fragrance. For me personally, I'm not sensitive to fragrance, but I do know a lot of people who are and like break out if there's fragrance in products. So I can understand that that would be a little bit frustrating, again, considering this is a clean product. But if you're just somebody who just doesn't like fragrance in foundation, but have been seeing those comments and maybe have been getting a little bit concerned, um, I just want to let you know that the fragrance, like it's there, I smell something, but it's really not something that's intense at all, like I barely even smell it. I almost feel like I wouldn't have even noticed it if I didn't know to look for it because of the comments that I've been reading, but it's really not so bad at all and it totally dissipates once it's on the face, so. Just a little note for anybody who is concerned. So now that my concealer is applied, let's talk about the powder. This is the Changemaker Flexible Coverage Pressed powder. So this is what the powder looks like. It's a pretty basic compact. It uh, is just like a plastic packaging with a nice mirror and you have the powder inside. So the powder does come in eight different shades. I ended up getting the shade light two, which is fairly light. I kind of wanted a powder that I would use to set my under eyes. It says that it is a long wearing lightweight formula that lets you boost coverage for a silky soft matte finish that melds with your skin and it creates a non cakey soft focus finish. So I'm just going to take this Real Techniques setting brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the powder and just use that to set underneath my eyes. There is supposed to be coverage in this powder as well. I'm using it to set like right underneath my eyes and also kind of in that triangle shape since it is a lighter shade. Like I said, I'm kind of trying to highlight a bit with it. Also gonna put that down the bridge of my nose and on the sides of my nose. I always like to set my nose just so my foundation doesn't move. 
and like around my mouth as well. And right in the center of my face and like kind of in the middle of my brow. Reviewing powder for me is very simple. Either I hate the way it looks and it makes my skin look dry and cakey or I'm fine with it and it just kind of sets down my makeup and I don't really notice it. I do feel like underneath my eyes it really accentuated the lines there. Oh my god, like a lot. Do you guys see that? I feel like there's a lot of little lines underneath my eyes and I use the Joseph Moran concealer all the time and it doesn't do that. So I think the powder actually didn't look great over there. So this may not be a great powder for the under eye area, but on my actual cheeks, I don't really see it. I don't feel like it did anything spectacular. I don't, I'm not like super excited about it. As far as price goes, by the way, because I did not mention that, this does retail for $48 Canadian. So all these products are in like the $50 range. Okay, so now it's time to just apply the rest of the makeup and we'll see how everything applies on the face and how it all looks when I'm all done. Okay, so I just finished applying all of my makeup. Everything applied as it normally would, super smoothly. I didn't really have any problems. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in real close so you can get a nice look of what the skin looks like up close. I feel like it just looks really nice. No issues. So right now it's actually a little bit later in the day. It's already 4 p.m. and it's like getting dark out already, which sucks. So unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to show you guys what the foundation looks like in natural light. Listen, it is what it is. I will still give you updates though throughout the night. I'm gonna be wearing this until the very, very end of the night and I'll let you guys know how it wears. Hi guys, um, it's late. I'm very ready to uh, take all this makeup off so I'm here to give you my first really and final update. Now I was initially going to do multiple check-ins throughout the night but every time I would look in the mirror to kind of like see what was going on, nothing really changed. <laughs> so I felt like it was kind of pointless for me to just go on camera and be like, yep, everything's the same. So I figured I would just come on here in the end and just tell you how everything performed over the last eight hours. <laughs> okay, let's take a nice little quick look at my face. I'm gonna zoom you guys in real close so that you could take a look with me. Okay, so I think it's really safe to say that this foundation wears really, really well. Um, I have been wearing this, like I said, for eight hours and there is pretty minimal change to the way that my foundation actually looks. The only thing that I notice is that there's a little bit of settling going on, especially in my smile lines. This isn't anything out of the ordinary though. This happens with pretty much every single foundation that I have. I'm most impressed with how long wearing this actually is. There's pretty much little to no fading going on normally with most of my foundations, especially on and around my nose and on my chin, it will completely come off. There's a little bit of fading like right on the tip of my nose, but I still feel like everything kind of stayed intact a little bit better than it normally normally would. What I really like about this foundation is that the finish doesn't really shift or change much throughout the day. It doesn't get more matte or more dry or more uh, dewy or glowy. It kind of just stays that really nice and pretty natural finish. My nose is like the only part of my face that sometimes gets a little bit shiny by the end of the day and it's barely even shiny by this time. And there's no parts of my face that look extra dry and cakey at all, especially around this area, which can sometimes happen because I'm pretty dry there. It still looks really nice and fresh. So let's summarize everything. I'll give you my thoughts on all three of the products, the primer, the powder, and of course the foundation. So first starting off with the primer. Now while the primer did work fine, I felt like it hydrated my skin nicely. I don't feel like this is a life-changing primer and especially considering it is $50. Does the same thing that my moisturizer does, so I think this would probably be a product that I would skip on. However, I would say that if you do want something that's really nice and hydrating, that's not your moisturizer. That does kind of, you know, grip your foundation a little bit more than a typical moisturizer. Then I would say that this would be something nice to try out. Do I think it's life-changing? No, but it is it is a nice product. I honestly don't really have like strong feelings for it either way. It's kind of like whatever. As for the powder, now initially I really didn't love the powder. I felt like it looked a little bit too heavy, especially underneath my eyes. And I still feel like my under eyes have definitely looked better. Uh, they're a little bit heavy and crepey looking right now, but I do feel like the powder did do a really good job of kind of smoothing out 
these areas right around my cheeks but at the same time it's not a powder that I'm totally crazy about there are other powders out there at a similar price range that I definitely prefer like the hourglass veil is like one of my all-time favorite powders I feel like this gives me an airbrush look but it doesn't look heavy underneath my eyes or on my face I feel like I kind of got to test it out try it more with even other foundations and see how it performs and I'll give you guys an update with how I feel about it last but not least of course the foundation yes I do really like the foundation I think that was clear throughout the video. It really does have kind of everything I look for in a foundation product. I am really looking forward to using this product with my typical routine, like with the Alper oils that I normally use and with my normal typical moisturizer and just with like the typical prep that I do for my skin because I feel like it's really going to make this product shine. I didn't really want to do that today because I kind of wanted to let the foundation shine on its own. I didn't really want to change it too much with other products. So I kind of wanted to keep it really, really nice and simple. I think after that, I'm really going to fall in love with this. Right now, I do really, really like it, but I kind of feel like it's going to push it over the edge once I go with my typical routine. If you guys want, I can do a quick little foundation routine using my typical products with this foundation on Instagram stories. So if you want to see that, let me know down below in the comments and I'll be sure to do it. And of course, follow me there if you want to check that out and also just see everything else that I'm up to. <laughs> All right guys, so that is it for my review of the new Bite Changemaker Foundation. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. As always, give this video a big thumbs up if you love foundation reviews and subscribe if you're not subscribed already and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.